hey, your patient needs an MRI of their head. If your patient needs an MRI but is on multiple IV infusions, you must first address whether your patient is hemodynamically stable. If you are actively titrating infusions to maintain hemodynamics, the MRI is probably not a priority. Discuss this with the ordering provider. If your patient is appropriate for MRI, discuss with the provider which infusions should be stopped and which must continue for the scan. Go ahead and finish the unit of blood, stop the LR and the electrolytes, but keep the propofol and the going, please. When scheduling the MRI with radiology, inform them that you will need the MRI IV infusion pump. Transferring the infusions from the Alaris pump to the MRI pump must be documented on the MAR using the stop and restart actions. This is considered a new setup. Also, most if not all the medications that you will continue infusing during MRI are high alert medications and require an independent double check. Two RNs are required. To complete the independent double check, either two RNs travel to MRI and complete an independent double check before and after the MRI, or retrieve the MRI pump from radiology and complete the independent double check on the unit. While primary and syringe tubing are available for the MRI pump, most of the time you will use the extension set. Stop the Alaris pump and remove the tubing from the channel, then document. Disconnect the primary set from the patient and connect to the MRI extension. Unclamp the black flow preventer by pressing in on the spine. Then unclamp the primary set's roller clamp and back flow preventer to allow priming of the extension, then reclamp and reconnect to the patient. Once the extension is primed, load the MRI pump. Turn the MRI pump on and allow it to load. Open channel A by pressing down on the purple button, then pulling up and out. Completely close the black flow preventer by pressing it all the way in. Then insert the IV set disc into the disc slot. While holding the spine of the black flow preventer, push down on the channel lever and push the flow preventer into its slot. Then, without stretching the tubing, push the silicone tubing into place. Finally, close the door by swinging it inward and pushing down on the door clamp. The menu screen offers New Patient Rate Mode, New Patient Drug Library A, and New Patient Drug Library B. We will now program channel A. Press the soft key next to New Patient Drug Library A. The selected medication is highlighted at the top of the screen. To choose a different medication, use the arrow keys and scroll until the desired medication is highlighted. They are in alphabetical order by generic name. Next, select the dose key and enter the ordered rate. Press enter to proceed. Verify the correct units, concentration, and rate. Then enter the volume to be infused. Press enter. If the pump has been set up and programmed correctly, push start appears on the menu. Confirm that all clamps are open, then press the start button to begin infusing. The green flashing light indicates that the medication is infusing. A complete medication library list is attached to the MRI IV pump pole. It is possible that occasionally you will infuse a medication that is not in the MRI pump medication library. In these cases, you will have to use the rate mode. However, because rate mode does not have safety guardrails, it should not be used to infuse medications that are already in the library. If using rate mode, enter the rate and the volume to be infused. There is also a bolus feature that can be used for fluid bolusing in emergency situations. In the final step of pump programming, you will document the new setup on the MAR and complete an independent double check if administering high alert medications.